Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. Happy Friday to you all. I'm very excited. I actually just finished putting up the Blaster Kid pre-launch page. It's exclusive for Patreon right now, but Sunday I'll, I'll be sharing the link with everyone. And uh, I shared a cover for Blaster Kid last night on Patreon. And um, so a lot of exciting stuff going on, but it is becoming a reality more quicker than you could imagine. So anyway, today we're going to look at Oko by Hub. I first discovered Hub's work probably about 12 years ago, could be even a little bit longer. I was in my local comic book shop and I saw a trade paperback for a book and I flipped it open and was immediately stunned by how amazing the art was. It's beautifully drawn. The colors are incredible. His use of perspective and storytelling is top notch. And I remember at the time, honestly, looking around online and trying to find some information on him, and I really couldn't find very much. Um, after I shoot this video, I'm going to actually research him a bit more. But anyway, this is really good stuff. We're not going to go in order. We're just going to look at the basically this first um, number one of, of four issues. But there's, there's quite a few series of this out now, and um, they're all awesome. I actually shot a dry run of a different book yesterday. Uh, didn't end up uploading it, but um, I spent about 40 minutes um, on a video that I didn't upload. But anyway, um, <laughs> I looked at the art. It was good. I enjoyed it. So, all right, let's do this one. This one I have not seen in a long time, honestly. I um, It's been a while. But anyway, this is the cover. From I, I went on YouTube. There's actually a tabletop RPG game. Um, and the guy pronounced it Oko, so I'm going with Oko. I don't know what I would have said before. I think I called it Oku. I don't remember. <laughs> All right, so this is just to add at the back of the book. Oh, this is the trade that I have. So this is the cover of mine, the Cycle of Water Collected Edition. I don't have the hard cover, but this is the book that I have for sure. And it's by Archaea. Archaea press whatever they're doing they're doing it right in fact they they i think were the ones that published um siegfried so or you know what let's do this hold on let's what let's get out of full screen mode for one second let's let's look go in order for a second so because it's kind of rolls out like a movie uh so colors are by hub and stefan pakeo man they're so good and this is translated. That's very interesting. I didn't realize that this was a translation of a book. But um, yeah, you know, uh, when I was doing the video yesterday, there was it was I was so impressed by the colors, and I guarantee the that that it even evolved more over a period of time. But um, man, I'll tell you. Oh, hold on. I was so impressed by this stuff. I'm a big like like when I'm when I'm looking at a book and I don't know the artist's work. One thing that I'll immediately look for is really like how they can move around the camera, meaning that the shots that they draw, the angles, the perspective, whatever you want to call it, and um, you immediately recognize in this guy's work that he's got a very very strong sense of perspective and also just camera placement. He moves it high, he moves it low, he pulls it back, he you know tilts it if he needs to um and it's always really 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 dynamic the other thing that you'll notice in these books is they are pretty panel heavy and the fact that they are you know like this isn't a ton of panels but this is still four five six seven panels and and you don't ever feel claustrophobic with his pages there's times where there's a lot going on um, but but overall, the only sort of claustrophobic feeling that you might get is that his stuff is pretty detailed. But he tends to open it up at the right spots. And again, the color really propels um, and creates a sense of clarity in the work, is what I noticed. was um, they'll, they'll create kind of a monochromatic palette to some extent. Not, not probably true mo monochromatic. But then they'll, they'll use... Uh, like different colors to sort of pull things forward so that you always know kind of what the main point of interest is like like the little bit of color in her um robe and the purple of his skin but they're not they're not massively affected by the actual sunset you know where where their skin is changing color and uh, I mean, there was a little bit of the shadows were purplish um 
This is nice. He they used this effect um, on one of the pages that I saw yesterday, like the shadowy leaf effect. It was really nice. I didn't delete the video. I still have it. So if I ever, if I go through it and I realize that I, I like it more than I thought that I did, then I can always put it up. But like I said, I'm more picky than it seems. <laughs> I just don't like to edit these videos, so you're always going to get me opening with OBS. <laughs> that's really, really cool. Man, that's great. It was funny. It was Yesterday, there was a tight shot of this character, and it was reminding me of Grifter from Wildcats a little bit. Like, um, Not not um, exactly, but when, when you see it like this, it's like you give him the little pointy things, and uh, it could be like a uber Grifter mask. Oh, man, look at this. I remember this page. It's funny. Yeah, this really stood out to me. I was like, man, this is some weird stuff. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't even notice the guy up here. That's wild. Stairs. This is really, really a nice, nice panel. Man, let's go full screen. Gosh, that is really, really beautiful. Excellent, excellent work. I pointed this out in yesterday's video. This is a little more detailed. He actually started to pull back on this, but I'll point something out in a second on another page. But I think it's, it's an interesting observation that might help people learning to draw so in his style what he'll do many times with the clothing because there's not a lot of like superhero anatomy meaning it's not people running around in spandex so most of the people are wearing robes or types of armor with the robes he tends to keep his fold count to two and three folds and what i mean by that is like if you look at this sleeve he's got one two folds okay I'm self-taught, so the way I observe art is not in a scholarly way, but at some point you have to break down things to be able to draw them out of your head. And uh, anyway, what, what it does is if you place these two creases or folds or chunks of clothing, whatever you want to call it, accurately, you'll, you'll get s somewhat believable um, drapery, you know. Um, there's, but I think there's five or six different folds. There's crush fold. There's Z. There's like the diaper fold. There's there's all these different folds that that exist, um, and um, when you once you memorize them and then kind of get an idea of like why they happen and where they happen, you, your clothes aren't that hard to be honest. There's there's definitely things that are about it, but in general, if you can if you can strategically pick. A small amount of folds it's a good way to get started and then people that do a lot of detail they're really just amplifying the quantity of those folds they know what happens between a joint and a elbow or you know what I mean like like uh, the folds that would probably happen there depending on the material On Patreon, it was funny as I used to use the word materials a lot, and I was it was like I was really almost referencing it in like a digital art way, meaning that just you know like these are made of a different material than wood, and uh, burlap is a different material than silk, but all of those things have different characteristics and thicknesses. So when you're drawing clothes, as an example, you have to take into account that something thin and silky will fold a lot more and you'll get more of this. A thick wool jacket is gonna have less folds. It's gonna be less complex. This guy's got tiny hands. Um, <laughs> foreshortening, it's, 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 not, it's not really incorrectly drawn. It's like not how um, like an American comic artist would do it, which is probably amplify the fist size a little bit. This is nice. This is good. Ah, oh, this is a great shot right here. Man, this all day. Love this. That is really cool. 
Oh man, I love the the this green color and even the light, the lamps kind of coloring all over the wood right there. That is so cool. Kelsey, do this. This on Blaster Kid all day. <laughs> Excuse me. My phone was blowing up earlier. I was like worried to do the video because uh, I don't know if I get interrupted a lot. Man, this is this is such great shit. Man, it's good. It mentioned um, in yesterday's video that there was a video game that Capcom, I'm pretty sure it was Capcom released, called Onimusha. And Onimusha was sort of a cross between like Resident Evil, uh, maybe Tomb Raider or whatever. It's like a third person, like sort of adventure button or what do you call it, like tri tricks and traps kind of game. But um, yeah, there was there was definitely like I'm, it's just a coincidence more than anything. But um, yeah, it was it was kind of cool. Like the the. I think like a good comic book to me should kind of feel like a video game. Like you're sort of like playing a video game by watching it. I mean, that's how I like a, or like a good animated movie or something like that. But um, yeah, if they can suck you in fast with, with some cool characters and colors and, you know, cool angles and cool looking characters, you've got a winner. You can tell right away, to be honest, I, I think. I mean, within a within a minute or two, you should be able to flip through a comic and see if it's gonna get you excited or not. Maybe all, maybe not all books. Some might be slow burns, but you know. I can always tell if I like a comic if I'm reading it. If I start making sound effects, like like not not reading sound effects but just you know you're like you know it's like you hear the scenes i had that i i honestly i've read the first two um mark silvestri uh batman comics and um the first one the scene with harlequin i thought was really nicely done it, it really was like I, I felt like i was i could smell it and see it and hear it and it was like pretty pretty nice scene It's funny because I can't remember if I, I did a really long video on the um, Todd McFarlane uh, compendium for Spawn, the black and white. I don't remember if I did that for Patreon or if I did it for YouTube though. I don't even remember if I uploaded it to be honest. It's like how how busy I've been. <laughs> I'd have to check. I maybe I uploaded it to Patreon. If I didn't, I don't know what I did with it. My Patreon is loaded, honestly, I always tell people this, but there's probably close to 800 videos on there. Most are um, how-to videos, but there's there's easily 150 other book and artist reviews. It's a ton of shit, and they're all long, too. Most are very long. Because um, I don't know how to self-edit. No. <laughs> if you're going to look at an art book, you might as well make it an adventure, that's what I say. This is nice. Aaron Weisenfeld had a great scene in, um, I think it was Guardian Angel, where a guy, uh, oh yeah, it was Guardian Angel. He drives a Jeep off of a cliff, and they crash into the water, and there's this great um, underwater scene where the guy goes in, and he had this sort of swirly water thing. This is this is really good, too. So it's, it, it's fun to see the creative solutions that people have to something like this, because, you know, most most of the time if you're working with another writer now hub hub may write this book himself but even still you know you come up with a scene but then you have to come up with an artistic um solution for it i remember adam hughes saying one time that um drawing comic book pages is just basically it's a series of uh, solving problems and it it really is true the better the better handle that you have on form then it becomes much easier if you if you can move form around in space uh, you really have um tackled a huge part of the um the problem so 
don't neglect your fundamentals or you'll go mental and it won't be fun <laughs> what in the world is going on here it was a little hard to read it felt like his leg had vanished but I see it's in the water with some splashy foam blurp blurp I got I I mentioned this before, but I bought the sixteenth um, collected edition of Berserk. <clears throat> Kentora Mura. I'm I'm gonna I'll do an open that book on it. Um, I only have issues one, two, and sixteen. I can't one. I can't afford to buy all the other ones, and two, I don't have the room for them. So I'm kind of cherry picking and just buying ones more for the art. Um, you know, if I see a like a flip through gem mint collectibles had done a flip through of it and i saw it and I, I um i thought it looked great and i was like okay i'll get this one um so but yeah i don't have room for i think it's gonna be f four how many books i want to say it's is it 42 hardcovers something like that when it's all said and done that's a lot of storage room I would talk more about Hub. I just don't know much about him as an artist, so it's it's tricky to do a video of um, you know artists that I, I'm not as familiar with as a person. I'm really hoping that he's on Instagram. He or she, I don't even know if it's a guy or a girl, to be honest. There was another artist that I used to follow years ago. It was He got real popular a year or two after I had seen his work, and then just kind of vanished. Um... He did, uh, God, what was his name? He did these really cool, almost like Capcom looking drawings that were c colored, like, like really state of the art at the time. And it'd be like, um, like a Japanese guy with like wooden, those wooden shoes with like the little, like, l like le layer levels on the, the heels. And then they'd, he'd have jugs and stuff like that. Someone will know who I'm talking about. He was really popular like 12 or 13 years ago. I kind of feel like he went by a name that was short like that, but that guy was so good. I'm sure that the, he's still working in like um, game design or something like that. I don't, he, I, he wasn't a comic book artist, I don't think, but man, his spot illustrations were great. They did, they did, I think, a book and collected them. This is nice. It was interesting too. Is well, you know what? This this could be. This looks a little photo-y. Um, the some of the skies in the later issues were photos. This, it's hard to tell, which is good. I mean, that's where you want it. You, if you're using photos for, uh, you know, like a sky or something like that, if you can blend it in and get it to sort of sit comfortably with the art, I think that it's okay. Some of this looks like photo. It might it might be like like this looks like photo. This doesn't really and then over here it starts to a little tiny bit more like right in here but it may not be you just don't want it to like stand out like a sore thumb man that is a great shot too really really beautiful so cool this is nice too i like this clever little layout it's fine he signs every page Ooh, look at this this is nice <laughs> oh, I love water. Like this kind of stuff. Waves. Yeah, I thought this would be fun. Something a little different. I hadn't seen it in a while, and I was sort of... I was looking around for um, interesting things to... to possibly go through and and this really was a big deal when i discovered this guy's work i was sold immediately became a big fan and uh you know at the time was really surprised that more people weren't aware of him but you know i mean the stuff was on the shelves it wasn't like he was on on the internet trying to get work oh god look at that that is cool it's funny like 
Aaron Weisenfeld, again, just as a coincidence, but in Team 7, number one, he had a, it was a down shot of a tower that was similar to this with the explosion and a guy, like, jumping out of it. But um, he has some funny similarities in, in some of the um, content, uh, but they're, they're not exact replicas of each other. This is really cool. But yeah, I mean, Hubba is a great penciler. He's a fantastic inker. There's nothing in here that ever stands out to me as like, oh, yeah, you know, <clears throat> the drawings are cool, but boy, he really loses it, like here or there. None of that. And then the colors are great. I mean, I don't know what Hub did before Oko, but if it was his first book, I mean, he came in really, really proficient at everything, like beyond proficient, like at a real high level, to be honest. I mean, some people could draw their whole lives and not get to this point. This is great. So we're getting towards the end of this. You know what I'll do? Hold on. We can do this. We'll look at a little bit of the book that I looked at yesterday. Because this is nice, but it doesn't have the variety of um, what I saw yesterday. So, so this was really nice. This is just a beautiful, like... Um, little bonus piece in the book but man this is just so pretty i love this this is just fantastic and again it's like a perfect style he he put together all the things that he loved in in art and just man nailed it with this this imagery i'd buy a book that just looked like this to be honest this is fine it would be different, but you could really do something cool with this. This is the last page of the other book, but you can see what I'm talking about, though, where, like, um, this still looks like traditional inks to me. Oh, yeah, it was funny. Is I actually... <laughs> that's really weird. Did I do it on this page? No, I think it was another page in. Um, I was debating because the art looks so pristine if it was traditional or digital, but what I did is I checked the panel borders. It's a good place to start. Um but you can clearly see that these are traditional panel borders. So there's a little bit of overdrawing, the lines a little broke up. I and mean, there's digital tools that can make it uh, gritty, but but I don't think that's the case here. So, But yeah, the colors on this stuff are absolutely beautiful. And just, man, the storytelling and the attention to detail in particular on, on this series is just phenomenal. It's so freaking good. Bigger is better. <clears throat> I mean, it's the the color choices on this shit are just so man, so nice. I love that. At times when he when the color is stick in this range, it was reminding me a little bit of Eduardo Rizzo um, colors, which would be I think Grant Goliash colored it. I could be wrong on that, um, uh, but. Uh, yeah, at times it had like the like this kind of colors reminds me of a hundred bullets. <laughs> this was the thing that reminded me of Anamusha. One of them. There's a few in this in this story, but yeah, this room. There's a like a section in the game where you have to sort of go through this like temple. Kind of reminded me of this. Look at this again. The colors. This is so pretty. And this is really like, I like this style of um, art where what, you know, it's interesting too is the, the look is different and I'd have to go back and look at the other issue to compare what, what the difference is. But like this almost feels like it's cell animation, how, how smooth the color like lays on the line art. And the other one felt a little like almost te like there was more texture to it and there may not have been, but. Yeah, this almost has like a cell animation feeling um, in terms of the, the the color place, like how it sits. The art, it's interesting. But it reminded me of um, how um, Jeff Darrow's work, this page was so badass. Look at this thing. I just thought this was really really like it's very detailed like like uh, like it's it's challenging for your eyes to take in everything that's going on but it's fun once in a while to have pieces like this where you can spend a little quality time and really sort of soak in all the craziness that that's going on um and it's it's not a um you know it's like a more light scene so it's not like you're 
it's not a war or something where there's like a million guys fighting with swords and you know crazy stuff going on but now it is <laughs> spoke too soon <laughs> Uh, this is cool. Oh yeah, they run into like this maze. It's really, really awesome. It's like a like a hedge maze. <coughs> I don't know what they call them in Japan. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> I love this panel. It's great. There's there's so many great oh god this page is awesome too that's what I'm saying hope people stuck it out through through thick and thin on this video because this is really really great that is such a cool shot this is great and then this this panel right here I love the fact that you get this more intimate feeling where you're on the sort of deck with them and even underneath the wood like it's like you're almost protected there's warmth there's these the lamps they're dressed nice. And then this, the contrast of this is really, really terrific. Cold, everyone's wearing blue. I mean, it's really beautiful, beautiful work. Thoughtful. This is gorgeous. <laughs> All right, blood, half cut up body. So much for gorgeous. What is going on, bro? What in God? Oh, is it a bad dream? Jeez Louise. Oh, look at this. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm not... Oh, whoop, sorry. I'm not supposed to curse in these. That's my own rule. It's disrespectful to the artist and to their fans. I'm doing this for you guys, not for me. Although I tend to ramble, but... That's really interesting. It's like there's snow, but yet the sun is coming out symbolically i'm sure that he played with this idea throughout the next few pages based on what i'm what i've seen on the other work is that that um this is the beginning of a change in the story it's really nice though man god there's a lot of freaking panels on this page one two three four five six seven eight nine ten panels and it's like really really well done definitely stays in the sort of medium small to small category in terms of size relationships of things but the color helps like this area of color is is different this is all blue uh, this being kind of this amber color it helps chunk things which is important chunking <laughs> hey chunking get it Womp, womp, womp. All right. This is giving me Resident Evil 5 vibes, I think. Is it Resident Evil 5? I'm thinking of. You would think I'm a big gamer, but I haven't played a video game in years. But I, I used to enjoy video games more. I just don't have the time. No time. It's cool. It's funny because it almost like it's weird. It gives you like a. I guess it is. Is it kind of curving? Yeah, I guess it sort of is. He's got a little bit of a curvilinear. No, I don't know if it would be called curvilinear, but whatever. Like like it is. Perspective is curving a bit, and then it sort of straightens out when it gets over here. It's pretty interesting, but I don't think it's sloping down. These give the illusion of it, but I think this is all. Well. No, it kind of it kind of curves. Yeah, he's got. Yeah, it's interesting. It's uh, it's almost like a radial perspective or something. I don't know. I don't know. Like book learning, people might have a name for it, but it's like the vanishing point is like kind of like right here. But he's got these circles of perspective that are sort of wrapping around this way, and then it sort of curves this way too. It's interesting. It works well. Looks good. He kept a good handle on it. It's nothing nothing is tilt like leaning too low where it starts to look wrong call that I, I my own name for it. I call it like the breaking point of perspective where it can be accurate to vanishing points and horizon lines but it can also look bad artistically it doesn't look cool this is great 
God, this is a ton of shit too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine panels. I'm trying to keep Blaster Kid somewhere between four and eight panels per page. I don't want to get into the nine, twelve, except if I'm making a point. If there's if there's like a specific reason, but it's too too tempting to do this, and it just that's not what I want the book to to have. It's almost like you're like because you're dealing with time when you when you draw comic book pages you can s slow time down and spread it out or you can kind of move things forward in quicker like bigger chunks of time it's interesting I think once you fall into the eight to eleven panel flow it's very difficult to get out of it in fact we'll let's see how many pages have four or five panels for the rest of the book because i haven't really been paying attention i, I don't think that there'll be any <clears throat> but there may be we'll see he definitely i remember there being a double page spread in the book that i had i could be wrong on that but i felt like i'm nearly sure that i there was a double page spread but i, I might be wrong it's been a while This is nice. This was the this was the panel that reminded me of Rizzo for a hundred bullets, just a little bit. Like not not really a drawing style, but it definitely had a like a lono sort of like troubles are coming. <laughs> wow, this page is really busy. Pretty violent stuff, but it doesn't get gross. I mean, I'm pretty desensitized to violence and stuff like that, but like, I don't feel like this is like, um, uh, what do they call it? I can't think of a term. That's good. Oh, look at the colors here. Oh, gratuitous. That was. I haven't said that word in 15 years. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> All right. I need coffee. I'm dying. Let me just take a sip of coffee. This will make the video much better. I like this top panel, though. Honestly, I'm not just saying that, but it was one I, I did remark in the other video that I shot of this yesterday that, that I... It's weird because there's no one in the hallway, but it's beautiful at the same time. And that blue color and, and hitting the floor looks great. Okay. Let's shut this. Oh, man, this is nice. Man, that's so good. This is five panels. No, six. Close. I'm going to give him credit for falling into the category that we were looking for, though. This is such a great little panel. <laughs> Buckethead might be in here. <laughs> he was raised by chickens. It's like, what? what are you talking about? Buckethead, what's that? All right, let's go, friends. Okay, we'll skip through some of these a little quicker. This is nice. It's like they're at a park, like a state park. <laughs> It's the map. Oh, dude, we're, I hope that I open the page with the forest. Oh, man. Remember I was talking about the leaves and the shadows? He did a, a version of it in this that's way cooler. The other one was good, but this, this one in this book is great. This is a money panel. Man, I absolutely love this. So beautiful. Kelsey, stuff like this. <laughs> Kelsey better watch this or he's going to be in big trouble. No. These are really interesting color choices. I actually really like these colors. Um, I, I had done a pen and ink piece with uh, markers years ago and used almost the same exact palette as these, these not this. Um, and they really work good together. This sort of creamy coffee cream and reds and dark grays and black. Um, can't use it all the time, but it, it's, it's nice. This is great, too. Look at the fucking inks on this. I love the dry brush, and then this is all tight and clean. This dude can do it all. 
This is a nice panel. Again, I really like the color on it. Wow, look at this back here. Oh, it's so fun. Did I mention the Blaster Cable pre-launch page is up? <laughs> it is. I'm going to do, I told Patreon, I'm going to do, I think it's six more pieces, and then Blaster Kit is a go. So I'm going to do uh, one more cover. I, like I said, I completed one yesterday. I'm going to do another one, and then um, I've got uh, five more interiors that I want to show to um, uh, cover, like, the scope of the book, you know, to make sure that people get a, get a handle on um, the the, the world and the characters and stuff like that. It's tough in a couple of pieces without spoilers to um, get the point across. So, so it was cool. So it was interesting. I, I didn't remember these robot things in the book, but um, apparently they do show up at some point. It feels like a little trippy, but, you know, you never know, friends. This is nice. I wonder if this is a stat. This little area back here. I'd have to compare it to the other one. This is great, though. That is some small drawing down in here. Honestly, like, look how tiny that shit is. If you had it in the regular comic, you'd barely be able to make this out, but this is, like, fully realized. It's got to be a stat. I I'm thinking that, that like, they, they probably colored it on this page, but I think that this is probably, like, line art from another panel. Is it this? It could be this. It is. It's just this smaller. Or no? Well, I want to know. Her sleeve is like that. Her sleeve is like that. Damn, it's close. Uh, let me see. Two folds. Yeah, you know, I think it is. I think it's a stat of that. I was trying to match up this information. It felt. It feels like the circle thing is different, but I don't think it is. <clears throat> this is great. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Ooh, look at this. Really cool. This is like Fawford and the Grey Mauser Mignola colors. Just um, not... That, that book, I think, was hand-colored, but the palette here is very, very reminiscent to that. And that is some cool shit. Kelsey, stuff like this! <laughs> Alrighty, this is nice. It's really interesting. Like this, this all works really good. The warm, the warm area up here is really nice. You've got all the cool, and then the warm, and then this is cool. I mean, cool looking. Uh, and then this is interesting. Oh yeah, all the crabs. I remember that. Okay, hari kari. Again, many, many panels, many people, many panels. This isn't the page I was talking about, but there's a little bit of the shadowy thing here. Well, this is cool. I don't remember seeing this piece yesterday. Uh, do I? Let me see. Okay, I've got a really good visual memory. I don't, yeah, I don't think I saw this page yesterday. If I did, I must have shut it quick. If, I think I made a joke about this, but this is nice. I'm a big fan of like waterfalls and that kind of stuff and art. I think it always looks good. I remember this. <clears throat> really, really cool shot. I love art like this where you can really kind of just like let your eye wander and look at all these like little layers. He could have put some fun little Easter eggs in here, but I, obviously it wouldn't fit the story. But yeah, it's cool. This is a nice shot. These guys coming down. All right, I gotta start wrapping this up because I need to get to work. We'll hopefully see that forest page that I was talking about. I think it's coming up because I think it was with these dudes. This isn't it, but this is nice too. <clears throat> I like this because the grass is so thick. Like the horse, you could see how far the horse kind of fell in it, and even these bodies, they're like pretty deep, thick grass. All really, really beautiful. This doesn't really feel like streaking light to me. I did a samurai piece, funny enough, um, years ago in pen and ink, and I, I did 
light kind of coming through the forest. It's tricky, really tricky technique to do. What, it, what he did on his is where the light is hitting, he pulled out most of the shadow. And then do you see that like where there where there is shadow, he left like dark areas in. Um, so the other thing you can do is the direction of the light. You can actually draw your lines only existing in like patterns so that like you, you're not drawing lines against the direction of the light. I think I think I did a little bit of that. can't remember how I solved the problem. <clears throat> Some nice like leaf patterns here. But the one that I'm looking for is come on. Was it this? No, this isn't it. This is getting closer. So, again, real immersive. I like the guy in the tree. He's drawing the ladies. You know a guy is creepy when his spit goes from his top teeth to his bottom teeth. <laughs> this was it. This is such a great shot right here. I thought this was fucking awesome. Just like, it, uh, we'll take in the whole page here real quick first. So, you know, got this elk or something getting shot by the spear. But man, this down here is really cool. I liked, I liked how he pushed everything back here into the shadow, I and mean, you really feel like you're part of the scene almost, like you're like the fourth member of their crew spying on them. It's really, really nice. It it really creates uh, an engagement for me, um, and uh, that's fun. You know, again, it's that that like I kind of had said the the feeling of playing a video game, like you're part of the book. That's exciting to me. There's a lot of nuance to, to, like, I mean, I came from a music background, and, you know, like, music, you, you're trying to take someone on a, a ride, you know, there's a lot of different uh, versions of that, but the same with art, it's like, you know, you can draw a comic book story and have it be very sort of, like, literal, but you can also create, you know, worlds and create depth to characters and stuff like that, and there's a lot of different ways to achieve it <clears throat> but I think you have to be sensitive to being able to observe it in art or recognize it in abstract things and then wield it like a sharpened blade <laughs> this is interesting I'm assuming everything burned it's pretty cool ciphers for burnt wood it definitely gives you the you right away you know it's charred Charred wood. Oh, wow. The circus burnt up. All right, I'm going to start wrapping this up. Well, I saw the images that I wanted to share. <laughs> but I thought it was important for you guys to see like how the book evolved because the it's pretty pretty amazing, I think. And, and consistent, though, at the same time. It's not like he didn't change anything drastically. I think you could definitely recognize that it's the same artist, but at the same time, I mean, it did actually improve. It's subjective, but I mean, I think I think that this stuff actually is a step forward. This is great. All right, let's get out of full screen mode. Okay, you guys have a great day. I will be back Sunday live with my main man, Kelsey. I was going to call him Kelsey Grammer. That's not right. Kelsey Shannon. <laughs> if we shaved him down, we could maybe make him look like Kelsey Grammer. It take some work. He might need a tan. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, you'll be able to see a new Blaster Kid cover if you're not a member of my Patreon. And like I said, it's already up there. And uh, Blaster Kid pre-launch page. And I think Kelsey's got some goodies to share with you, too. So it's going to be good. And I don't even know what we're doing this week. So if you guys want to recommend anything and you've made it to the end of this video, in my book, you've already got a leg up on everyone. So your recommendation may steer the ship this week. Because I, I don't believe that we had a concept. I, I, I'm almost sure that we don't. So... 
fire away. If not, I'll ask Kelsey to pick something because he's always got good art that I don't know as well. So, all right, you guys have a great day. I love you all, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited that this volcano is about to erupt. Later. <laughs>